All right. Happy day after Election Day. It's also known as Wednesday. And happy Diwali to all our Hindu friends. For those who don't know, Diwali is a Hindu festival of light that symbolizes the spiritual victory of light over darkness, good over evil, and knowledge over ignorance. Hey, knowledge. That's what we're all here for. And we've got another great webinar lined up for you today. You probably already know that the solar market is expanding at meteoric rates because consumer demand is increasing. And there are, there are enhanced codes in California and Florida that mandate solar capacity or solar readiness on new homes. But are you up to speed on everything you need to know about residential solar system installation? Well, the ROI on roof-mounted solar is only as good as the quality and longevity of the application methods and roofing materials that are used. So we're going to cover appropriate design techniques, advanced installation methods, and optimized roofing materials that are best suited for solar systems. Here to walk us through all of that is Todd Miller. He has spent his entire professional career in the steep slope metal roofing industry and currently serves as president of Isaiah Industries, a leader in manufacturing the best roofing solutions for homes across North America and throughout the world. Todd is widely respected for his expertise in residential metal roofing, which includes an in-depth knowledge of various panel systems, base metals, and coatings. He also possesses a keen understanding of the building envelope, including ventilation and thermal dynamics. His experience includes working with hundreds of homeowners in several states who are planning for solar installations and helping them prepare for successful installation by providing them with ideas and guidance. He was also involved in the design, manufacturing, and marketing of the Freedom Solar Thin Film Integrated Solar Roofing System. Todd has been an industry leader for more than 20 years, including currently serving as board vice president for the Metal Roofing Alliance, as well as a noted public speaker, author, and expert. Speaking of the Metal Roofing Alliance, they are the sponsor of today's webinar. They represent metal roofing manufacturers in the United States and Canada, and they were formed in 1998 as a nonprofit organization to help educate consumers about the many benefits of metal roofs. The main objective of MRA is to increase awareness of the beauty, durability, and money-saving advantages of quality metal roofs among homeowners, as well as to provide support for metal roofing businesses and contractors. For more information about how to become a member, visit www.metalroofing.com. Now, during the course of today's presentation, you could submit questions for our guest. Simply use the questions box on the right side of your screen. I'm going to look over those questions, and I'm going to pose them to Todd during the Q&A time that we've set aside after his presentation. Todd, the floor is all yours. Thanks so much, Mike, and thank you, everyone, for attending today. I look forward to our time together here. Um, as Mike introduced, uh, the subject today is residential solar system installation. Uh, also, as he mentioned, this is sponsored by the Metal Roofing Alliance. Um, as Mike was saying, I think he covered everything I was going to say about the Metal Roofing Alliance, which is great, except for one thing. Um, and that is that we have seen the metal share of the residential roofing market increase from 2% to around 12 or 13% over the last 20 years. Uh, metal is now the second largest segment of residential roofing. And so that means very much why it makes a lot of sense for anyone that's getting involved in solar or anyone who's trying to build uh, energy efficient, sustainable housing uh, to be thinking about metal. So while our focus today is going to be on solar, we're gonna be throwing in a little bit about metal at the same time as well. And one of the things we have recognized at the Metal Roofing Alliance is that there's a lot of synergies between metal roofing and solar installations. So that uh, will come out a lot today in our talk as well. So as we move ahead, um, the thing I'd like to, to look at first is the homeowner's perspective uh, in terms of choosing, uh, choosing a solar installation for their home. What drives a homeowner to even consider solar for their home? And uh, let's look at a couple statistics first. Um, in 2018, an interesting fact, um, uh, and this is according to the Solar Energy Industries Association, which their website is seia.org. Uh, but in 2018, a new solar project is being installed in the United States every 100 seconds. Uh, so a little less than one solar install going in every, uh, a little less than every two minutes. Uh, we are currently approaching 2 million total solar installations in the United States. Um, and to just show you how the growth is happening, in just uh, just five years ago, in 2013, 
The annual solar installation was about 3,000 megawatts of systems. Uh, that has more than tripled. Uh, in this year, it will be over 10,000 megawatts of systems installed. Um, of those solar installs, about 25% have been res are, are residential. Uh, the, the residential percentage, interestingly, is staying pretty level. Um, it's not like it's suddenly jumping up to 40 or 50%. Uh, we still have uh, a great number of commercial industrial solar installations going on out there, and uh, those are 75% of the market with residential about 25%. So when a homeowner thinks about a solar install uh, for their house, what are some of the priorities that they hold? What are some of the reasons that they may consider solar for the home? And I think the top one really is they have a passion and a care uh, for the environment and doing the right thing. Uh, I think another thing that oftentimes they are looking for is to lower their energy costs. And of course, as we think about lowering energy costs for a consumer or a, or a homeowner, there's a couple aspects of that, lowering their energy costs today, uh, but also protecting themselves against the rise in future energy costs. So I think that's a driving factor for them as well. Um, you also have a number of folks who are choosing solar for energy independence. Um, maybe they are actually uh, intending or building off the grid someplace. Um, but regardless, they see that they don't want to have, don't want our country to have uh, the dependence on fossil fuels that it has now, and maybe they personally don't want to. Um, when you look at the energy used in our homes in the United States, uh, that accounts for more than 30% of all USA energy usage uh, just to make our homes function. Um, the energy we use in our homes actually uh, is greater than the energy used for by all the cars and trucks on the road. So it shows you that there really is something to this. A, a homeowner, a, an individual consumer, uh, really can begin to shift the needle in terms of energy uh, independence. Um, it just starts with one homeowner and it grows from there. So I think that's a, another big goal of, of uh, homeowners in many cases. Um, finally, I think a lot of homeowners are looking at solar as a way to increase their home value and also the saleability of their home. Uh, for most home, most homeowners, their home is their largest single investment, and we're seeing homeowners willing to invest in those homes to maintain or to grow that investment. Uh, a survey that was done by a realtor organization uh, surveyed consumers and said that half of all consumers said they would pay up to 10% more for a house that was solar equipped. Uh, so that's a, a significant way, again, for someone to build some value into their home. Um, another survey, and this I believe was done by the banking industry, uh, showed that a home's value is increased by $20,000 for every $1,000 in annual operating savings. Uh, so if a homeowner lives in a climate where uh, maybe normally their, their energy bills or electric bills are a couple hundred bucks a month, uh, maybe $2,400 a year. Um, according to that survey, adding solar to their home would increase their home's value by over $40,000. Uh, so there's significant payback in terms of enhanced home value uh, by adding a solar system uh, to a house. So next question I want to look at is, homeowners thinking about putting solar uh, into their house. So the question comes up, or well, where should solar be installed? Um, certainly one option is self-standing installations, and we do see some folks doing that on occasion. Um, problems with self-standing installations are obviously you're building some sort of structure or support to, uh, to handle uh, the solar array that's being put in, so you've got that cost. And also most properties, it would be very difficult at ground level at least to put something in that would not uh, be subject to shadows throughout the day, either from trees or uh, nearby uh, buildings and, and outbuildings and structures and things like that. So although some folks do choose this sort of self-standing install uh, as their option for solar, not necessarily the best option for everybody. So oftentimes uh, where we end up at is depending upon the roof shape uh, and also the directionality of the home, in many cases, the roof uh, makes the most sense. Uh, 
uh, it's kind of interesting as uh, uh, as Mike introduced me, I, I've been involved in manufacturing residential metal roofing uh, for, uh, gosh, I, more years than I hate to, than I like to admit to, uh, over 35 years at this point. And one of the things I have frequently said is if you're in the roofing business, um, you really have to think of yourself as being in the energy business because you are either going to be able to use that roof to uh, create energy uh, or you're going to be able to use the roof to save energy uh, or perhaps both. And so, again, uh, most folks will end up turning to the roof as a logical choice uh, for where to put their solar array. Uh, this particular photo you see on the screen right now, um, I will point this out since I'm a metal guy, uh, that is actually a steel shingle uh, that is on that roof and then the uh, solar array has been mounted on top of the steel shingle roofing system. So next question I think of is, you know, when is the best time to add solar to a home's roof? And the average uh, solar installation life expectancy, so this is how long will the solar modules themselves last, uh, that average expected life is 20 years. Um, interestingly, and this is pretty pretty much holds true, uh, performance uh, of a most solar installations declines by about 1% each year. So at year 20, a solar installation is probably going to be performing at about 80% of the efficiency of when it was first installed, and it continues to decline a percent, after, a percent a year after that. So you hit a point where it just isn't in essence, uh, the ROI isn't good enough at some point, and that's uh, one of the reasons it would outdate a solar installation. In other cases, you could have mechanical things go wrong with it, and it simply doesn't function anymore. But when you look at that average life expectancy of a solar installation of 20 years, and then you say, well, the average life expectancy of standard roof shingles uh, in the United States is 17 years, and that is a number that uh, has been given by the Asphalt Roofing Manufacturers Association. Um, you kind of see the disparity there. So I'm putting a solar system up that's supposed to last 20 years, and I'm putting it on a roof that on average life expectancy is 17 years. Um, when you think about doing that on top of a standard shingle roof, and standard shingle roofs are 80% of the residential roofing market out there, um, the only time you'd want to do that would be when those shingles are new. Uh, so you, for example, would not take someone's uh, home that has maybe 10, 15-year-old asphalt shingles on it and decide to put a solar installation on top of that. It just wouldn't make sense uh, because the panels are going to far outlive uh, the life of the shingles. So that kind of brings us um, to where the Metal Roofing Alliance certainly sees metal roofing as being a great option, therefore, for solar installations. And I want to look at that, and then we'll jump back into to solar, but a couple things real quick on metal roofing and why there is this great synergy uh, with solar installations. Um, first of all, metal roofs have very similar benefits to solar. Uh, what we often find is that solar buyers are often metal roof buyers and vice versa. Metal roof buyers often then go on to buy solar. Um, that's because the goals and, and what they're trying to accomplish is the same. Uh, metal roofing has environmental friendly benefits. Uh, it is known for being able to save energy, which we will look at a little bit uh, later because that does figure into the performance of the solar system actually. Um, and of course, metal roofs also just uh, very much similar to the solar systems will add home value and desirability or saleability of a home. So let's look at this idea of metal roofs being energy efficient. Um, the way that happens is that a metal roof can actually keep a home naturally cooler in the summer, uh, reducing the air conditioning costs. Uh, this is done by reflecting radiant heat um, that's done in a couple different ways. Many of the coatings used on today's metal roofs actually have uh, special pigments in them that are reflective of UV, even in dark colors. Uh, used to be if someone, this reason you saw the white roofs in Florida, if someone wanted an energy efficient roof on their house, they would put up a white roof. 
Well, today you can actually get dark colors that also have pretty high reflectivity rates. Um, additionally, many of the metal roofs being produced today, uh, such as a lot of the metal shingle, shake, tile, slate profiles, actually have an airspace underneath of them between the metal and the roof deck. That airspace uh, acts as a thermal break or a, a, a air gap, um, and that thermal break then prevents heat conducting from the roof surface down to the roof deck and on into the structure. So the bottom line to all of this is that metal roof customers often report summer energy savings of up to 20% and more. Now, how does that work in conjunction uh, with solar? Well, if we can reduce the, peaks, the uh, peak energy demand of that home, which in many climates, that peak energy demand is like the afternoon of August 20th, the hottest, the hottest day of the year. Um, if we can reduce that peak energy demand of the home by putting a reflective metal roof on the house, then we can actually reduce the size of solar installation that has to go onto it. And in the end, if these things are done at the same time, uh, solar and metal roofing, we also just plain old end up with a more satisfied customer because of uh, the combination leading them to the greatest efficiency and energy saving. Um, so real quick graphic here, uh, metal roofing minimizes radiant and conductive heat gain. So the radiant heat gain, of course, uh, is what I was talking about, is done through the pigments that are used in the finishes on metal roofs today. And the conductive heat gain is blocked again by uh, many of these products, either in the way they're installed or the way they are designed, have a small air gap between the metal and the roof deck. And that dead airspace acts a lot like the small space between two layers of glass and the thermal pane window. Um, and it just blocks the conductance or, or blocks conductive heat transfer. Um, additionally, then, of course, metal roofs uh, take advantage of convective heat flow inside of the attic. So any heat that uh, does come into the attic space uh, can be exhausted out uh, with a ridge vent at the peak. You've uh, got intake vents down at the bottom of the roof and use convective heat flow to get that hot air back to the outside and out of the attic um, and potentially out of the home as well then, too, of course. Um, metal roofing, of course, is very long term, as we talked about. Metal roofs come in a wide range of styles uh, and also quality levels, but average life expectancy of a typical metal roof exceeds 40 years. Um, interesting, though, you know, that might be two solar systems that uh, get installed on the same metal roof over time. Uh, there are many metal uh, residential metal roofs in the United States that are over 100 years old. Um, so that's kind of an interesting thought. Remember when I was saying earlier, uh, if you're gonna put a metal roof on top of asphalt shingles, you probably want those asphalt shingles to be new when that happens. Not the case with solar, or excuse me, with a metal roof. A metal roof does not have to be new when the solar is installed, and yet it may still far outlive the solar installation. So that gives homeowners an option. They can invest now in a metal roof, um, realizing that down the road, I want to add solar. They won't have to worry about changing their roof. They could wait 10 years and, and add the solar, and the metal uh, roof will be just as appropriate for a solar installation uh, in 10 years as it is when it's new. So quick glimpse here um, at types uh, of uh, little bit on metal roofs. Metal roofs come in a wide range of designs that are very residential in appearance. Um, metal roofs are very durable and secure, providing a lasting safe surface that is not easily damaged during solar installation and maintenance. Uh, there again, um, you know, when solar panels are being installed on a roof, uh, there's certainly a fair amount of activity going on on that roof, uh, usually by workers who have a lot to think about. You know, they're making sure the panels are installed securely and safely, making sure that their own safety is uh, taken care of as well. And so it helps them if they have a good solid roof underfoot, they're not worried about granules that uh, might cause them to slip or something like that. Likewise, down the road, if the solar array needs any maintenance at all, 
that metal roof continues to provide an excellent base uh, of serviceability uh, beneath the solar panels. Um, now, we talked earlier a little bit about how energy efficient metal roofs are, and that actually can make the solar uh, system function more efficiently. Um, solar panels actually lose efficiency at higher temperatures. So the hotter it gets outside, the less effective a solar installation is. In southern climates where it's just plain old hotter out, um, the less effective a solar installation is going to be. Well, the metal roofs, uh, by reflecting away radiant heat, can reduce the rooftop temperature, um, keep that roof cooler. Oftentimes, roof temperatures can be, uh, with standard roofing, could be 150, 160, 165 degrees. Um, if we can drop that, say, by 20%, uh, with a metal roof keeping that surface cooler, then we're going to keep the solar panels cooler and thereby increase the solar energy production. Um, as it notes there, lower temperatures allow the chemical reactions inside the solar panels to occur more efficiently. Um, of course, that's a lot of the reason why solar panels, uh, traditional crystalline panels like you see in the photo here, are lifted up off the roof deck so you get some airflow underneath just trying to keep those absolutely as cool as possible to boost their productivity and their efficiency. Now, we're gonna talk here in a moment about how do you fasten uh, various types of solar systems to metal roofs, and uh, that does vary a little bit based upon the type of metal roof that's gonna be installed, so I wanna take a quick look at that. Uh, metal roofs come in several different styles and types. Uh, one is what we call exposed fastener. In the bottom right-hand corner, you see a typical profile of what an exposed fastener metal roof might look like. Um, these are called exposed fasteners because they are the roofs that you will see screw heads on when you look at the roof. Uh, the, the screws actually go right through the metal and right into the roof deck. Uh, these are also often called corrugated uh, type roofs. Um, the next style, which really plays heavily into solar, uh, at least PV panel installation, is standing seam. Uh, the reason standing seam plays so heavily into solar installations is you can actually attach the PV panels directly to the raised ribs and not have to put any fasteners through the roof system to attach the solar panels. We're going to look a little bit more at that here in a bit, but um, again, you know, when you think about that and you think about attaching these solar panels, if you can fasten and clamp them onto the raised ribs, uh, then you're not having to put any holes through the roof system itself. Um, obviously, wires and things will have to go down through the roof system, but the actual panels could attach to the raised ribs. So if you look at that lower right-hand uh, picture that's up on the screen right now, you see the raised ribs, uh, you see the... Uh, female rib there on the left, male on the right, and you can imagine how those would lock together or snap together during the roof installation. And then a clamp would fit down over that raised rib and clamp onto the rib that that clamp then would support and hold the solar panels. Again, we'll, we'll look at that here in a little bit more uh, detail here in just a little bit. Um, another type of metal roof that's pretty common today is modular metal shingles. Um, you see a couple of examples of metal shingles here. The top right is a stone-coated steel product. The uh, picture on the left is actually an aluminum uh, shake product. And you see some standing seam uh, product on the porch of that house as well. Um, interesting thing to, that can be done is these roofs can... Uh, have their solar readiness increased uh, by the option of foam backers put behind the panels to give them even greater rigidity for walkability. Um, again, what we see a lot of times with metal roofs is a homeowner will buy it and then we'll see them five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years later uh, wanting to put solar onto it because those goals of the metal roof buyer and the solar buyer are very, very similar in terms of, of what they want to do for the environment, um, for their own lifestyle, for saving energy, uh, all those types of things. Um, so there are some things that can be done to make these roofs a little bit more solar ready for a later solar installation. 
Uh, common metals used in metal roofing are painted steel with uh, zinc or aluminum metallic coating for corrosion resistance. We've got clear coated aluminum coated steel, painted aluminum, mill finish copper, and mill finish zinc. Those are the most common metals used in metal roofing today. So I want to look a little bit now at the weight um, factors that need to be considered when thinking about putting a solar array on top of a residence. Um, let's look at the weight of traditional, uh, the, the, and what we're talking about here is traditional photovoltaic panels, crystalline panels. Um, the typical panel size is 65 by 39 inches. Uh, that is 17 and a half square feet. That panel usually weighs right around 40 pounds. Um, a typical residential array, depending upon the size of the system, uh, will vary any place from 15 to maybe up to 40 panels for a, a very large system and large home, perhaps. Um, by the time you figure in the attachment brackets, the rails, anything that are used is used to attach the solar panels, um, a solar installation in the area where it's being installed uh, will weigh about three to four pounds a square foot. Now that is a that actually is a significant amount of weight on the roof. If you look if you look at asphalt shingles, uh, they weigh actually a very similar amount to what the uh, PV panel will weigh. Um, if you look at a tile roof, whether that's a concrete tile or a fiber cement or a clay tile. Um, it could vary any place from seven to 20 pounds a square foot, which of course uh, homes have to be built uh, to handle those higher weight roofs. Um, but if we look at steel and aluminum, kind of interesting here, um, steel roofs weigh typically right around a pound a square foot. Uh, aluminum roofs typically weigh between a half pound and three quarters of a pound per square foot. So. The benefit here is that, yes, you are putting weight on the home with the solar panels. There again, um, you can then reduce the weight on the home uh, by having a metal roof on that home rather than one of the heavier, uh, more traditional uh, roofing materials. So I want to look now at the different types uh, of solar uh, systems that are out there. Um, let's look at what a typical residential array might look like, though. Um, a typical residential array is usually someplace in the neighborhood of a six kilowatt system. Um, you know, what will happen basically for that is the system will be sized according to the location of the home and according to the energy demand of the home. Uh, again, what they often look at is that peak demand uh, of that home, which you know I usually just throw out as you know someplace around August 20th uh, every year. Um, but they will size the system based upon that. Um, systems then are also sized for a 15% loss. Uh, so basically, they'll run through the calculations, figure out the ideal size of the system and then divide that by 0.85 in order to bump it up by 15%. Um, and they do that just because we realize roofs aren't perfect places. Um, sometimes you might have dormer windows that end up casting a shadow across uh, the solar panels during certain times of the day, um, trees, the same thing. Um, but typically that 15% number is kind of the fudge factor. Um, so back to the idea of a six kilowatt system, the production you will get out of a six kilowatt system is going to vary based upon the location of the home, how much the sun shines basically. Um, but kind of as an overall average, a one kilowatt system will produce about 1500 kilowatt hours uh, of energy annually. So if we went to a six kilowatt system, that'd be six times 1500. So we're up around 9,000 kilowatt hours. Um, again, that's based upon the amount of sunlight that is received in any particular area. Now there's a great resource out there for information on that, um, which is uh, from the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, nrel.gov. Um, and if you see here, you see this graphic and it uh, shows the different areas of the country and those numbers reflect 
how many kilowatt hours of energy you should be able to produce annually out of a one kilowatt system. So remember earlier for average, I used 1500. If you look across the country, you see in the, the deep Southwest, uh, we're up around 2100 because they have just very few cloudy days. They have just lots and lots of sunlight. Um, as you get into northern climates where A, the sun may be less direct, but B, there's just more cloudiness, um, you see much, much lower numbers. Um, I'm not lost on the fact that my home state of Ohio is in one of the least pleasant areas to live. Anyway, um, but again, this website, National Renewable Energy Laboratory, um, is a great website with lots of uh, good information there if you're trying to learn about solar and what information you have to bring to your clients. So let's look again at the different uh, three primary types of solar uh, arrays. Uh, one is traditional PV panels, which are crystalline silicone, um, often called just crystalline panels or traditional PV panels. That's the predominant technology that's out there uh, today. Uh, that's primarily what most of us think about when we think about a, a solar installation is uh, traditional PV panels. Um, for a six kilowatt system, um, most of these panels would require something in the range of 350 to 400 square feet of solar panels on the roof uh, to, for that six kilowatt system. If we go then, the next style I wanted to look at is what's called thin film solar. Um, thin film really is just that. It's a thin, flexible film. Uh, rather than coming in panels, it comes in rolls. Um, and typically where we have seen thin film used is it will get laminated to standing seam metal roofing. So the thin film comes with a uh, high grade adhesive on the back and gets press laminated or pressure laminated uh, to a standing seam roof panel. Um, these, the thin film uh, products are not as efficient as the crystalline panels. Uh, so as, where I, as earlier I said, it would take about 350 square feet of crystalline panels for a six kilowatt system. Uh, with thin film, that's going to be about double that. It's probably going to be seven to 800 square feet uh, of roofing that would have to be covered in order to get that six kilowatt system. Um, additionally, this is more probably just observation than anything, but um, estimated life of the thin films probably is less than crystalline panels, um, not not just because of a loss of efficiency, um, but again, they are they are laminated. They're glued to that standing seam surface. And you know what we do see is eventually that starts to that lamination starts to lose some of its effectiveness, and that's usually what leads to the demise of the system. Uh, so I put these systems at probably around a 15-year estimated life, rather than the 20-year on traditional crystalline panels. The final area uh, that we're seeing in terms of types of systems is solar shingles. Uh, and yes, Tesla a couple years ago made a big splash with their solar roof, which is a well-designed, um, very neat product. Um, but there have also been several other companies and continue to be several other companies making solar shingles. Uh, for several years, Dow company had their powerhouse solar shingle. Uh, that has been uh, brought back to life by RGS Energy. Uh, there's a company up in uh, Michigan, Michigan called Luma Resources. They do a solar shingle. Um, and there's a couple of other companies and a couple of companies working on solar shingles they're going to be introducing soon as well. Um, these have similar efficiency in terms of productivity. They're very similar to the thin films. Um, approximately 700 square feet for a six kilowatt system. Um, like the thin film laminated to the standing seam though, they are what I call roof integrated in that the product also serves as the roof covering. Uh, so it's not a matter of uh, where you've got uh, with traditional PV panels, you've got the PV panel that is shadowing over the roof covering. Uh, this, uh, These products, the solar shingle actually is the roof covering as well. And you see a couple of examples uh, of solar shingles there. And um, 
they look a lot like thin films uh, on standing scene uh, in terms of appearance, uh, although the, the only difference being the lines are primarily horizontal uh, rather than the vertical lines of uh, standing seam roofing. So let's look at solar attachment. Um, and we're going to first look at uh, solar attachment of uh, the traditional crystal and PV panels. Um, very important uh, when you're attaching solar panels to use a proven and tested attachment method, not just for water tightness. And obviously that's what everyone thinks of first because I'm going to have to be putting some holes in the roof if, if, uh, if only just for the wires. I want those to be water tightness uh, or I want those to be watertight. But the thing that folks often don't think about in terms of crystal and PV panels in particular is you've got to have those securely attached because they can sustain some pretty significant uh, wind and uplift pressures. Uh, so you don't want someone's solar panel uh, taking off like a sail. Um, or worse, let, worse yet, uh, taking off like a sail and taking part of the roof with it as well. Um, so like it or not, with virtually all solar panel installations, you will have some holes in the roof. Um, however, there is one option, as we talked about earlier, where we attach to the seams of standing seam. Uh, there is one option that for the most part limits the penetrations to just small holes for the wires. Um, and that's a standing seam metal roof and that utilizes clamps to secure brackets for the panels to the raised seams. So here's a few examples of those. Um, S5 there, as you see on the clamp in the upper left, S5 is a, one of the leaders in the technology of these clamping systems. Uh, they're also a member of the Metal Roofing Alliance, but uh, here you see their S5 mini clamp attached to a standing seam rib. Uh, you see a couple of what I call set screws there on the left side. Uh, those are tightened down to hold the clamp securely to the rib. Uh, that bolt up on top that you see then would be to secure uh, the rail or the mounting bracket for the actual PV panel itself. Uh, so you can see what happens here is we're able to, again, clamp onto that standing rib. Um, metal roofs do have some expansion and contraction with temperature changes. Uh, in this case, the solar array is clamped to the rib, so uh, it's going to move a little bit with the roof system as well. Um, many of the solar systems uh, are done, as you see in that upper right, with a rail system. Uh, so they have the brackets or, or the clamps that mount to the roof and then a horizontal rail that runs between those and the panels attached to the rail. Uh, one of perhaps the more modern ways of doing it is what you see in the lower right photo is where you see that rail, that horizontal rail has been eliminated. Uh, and instead we are using clamps, clamps to attach to the clamps basically. Uh, we're using clamps to to uh, clamp the PV panel uh, against the standing rib clamp uh, on the metal roof. Um, another thing I wanted to mention here, um, we talked earlier about one of the metal roof types being through fastened metal roofs. Um, here you see uh, what's called a snow foot, I believe. Um, that is actually used on a uh, trapezoidal rib in a through fastened metal roof. In this case, they are actually screwing to that rib, as you see with the uh, metal screws there, um, that have uh, grommets on them for water tightness. But those screws are not going into the roof deck. They are not penetrating the, the uh, roof decking. They are simply uh, going into the rib, uh, the raised rib of the metal panel. So. These are systems that, again, attach to the metal roof panel itself, not so much directly down through to the roof deck. But the next type of metal roof or next type of solar attachment I want to look at is what I call standoff mounts. Uh, these actually do attach through the roof into the roof deck. Uh, there's a ton of these available out there and uh, lots of different styles and manufacturers, and they all have kind of different approaches to how they do things. Um, all of them, of course, the goal is to create a uh, mounting bracket that's going to be watertight and secure. Um, these types of mounting brackets are commonly used with 
traditional asphalt shingle roofs, uh, but they also can be adapted very well to metal roofs and in particular metal shingle roofs uh, as well. Um, standoff mounts do require penetrations through the roof um, and they have all, like I said, been designed with various ways of keeping those penetrations watertight. Um, most of the producers of these standoff mounts actually will have instructions showing how to use their products with various types of roofing materials uh, with metal, like I said earlier, now being the number two uh, residential roofing product being used today. Most of these guys have instructions showing how to use their uh, brackets with metal roofs. Um, oftentimes also, if you go to the metal roofing manufacturer, they will have recommended procedures uh, as well. Um, and then some of these mounts also have an option with them, which would allow you to pass wires through uh, into the attic through the same mount as well. Uh, so there'd be a channel or a conduit uh, off of the mounting bracket that would allow you to use that to pass your wires through as well, again, uh, in a watertight method. Um, many uh, of these types of standoff mounts are ideal for retrofit solar applications. Um, again, remember what I talked about earlier, you can install the, the uh, metal roof now and install solar 10 years later. Um, typically when you did that, you would be using one of these types of mounting brackets uh, when you uh, add that solar installation down the road. So show you a couple of examples of these. Um, here's a product called Fast Jack. Uh, this is being fastened into a uh, aluminum shingle system. Um, as you see there, uh, the bracket actually covers the uh, lag screw that goes down into the roof and down into the roof deck. Uh, so there is no exposed fastener. That bolt you see on the top is simply going into that uh, pipe or that stanchion in order to secure the uh, the solar panels, but the actual mounting into the roof is completely concealed. Um, you also see here what was done on this particular product because of it being a metal shingle was there's a uh, stainless steel base Underneath the fast jack bracket, that stainless steel base has been designed to spread the weight out a little bit over the metal shingle, um, again, just to help with weight distribution and keep from uh, crushing uh, any of the metal uh, panels. Uh, this particular system is one of those metal shingles that has the airspace between the metal and the roof deck. So that stainless steel base plate uh, again, helps keep from, from crushing those panels at all. Uh, here is a, uh, another bracket. This, of course, is being used with asphalt shingles, uh, but you can see how uh, this bracket is also has a mounting plate that's being fastened to. In this particular case, the screw going into the roof system is exposed. Uh, there's a, a steel washer there with a neoprene gasket underneath that washer to keep it be help it being watertight. Um, this next product is a product uh, that's called quick mount uh, brackets. And what you see there kind of looks like anyone familiar with roofing uh, coming up out of that stone coated steel shingle there, you see something that looks a little bit like a pipe flashing or a pipe jack that would go around a, a plumbing vent on a roof. And that's kind of what these look like a little bit. Um, if you see here, though, and you look at the bottom edge of that course of shingles downhill from the bracket, you see silver metal there. And that is actually the plate that is uh, attached to the uh, bracket, the flashing bracket that we see there. That is actually a plate so that if any water gets in right there in that, around that hole where the steel shingle goes around, uh, the bracket there, if any water gets in there, it ends up on top of that steel plate and drains out uh, where you see that steel plate edge uh, creeping out there. So uh, it's kept watertight that way. The very top of that then is a uh, neoprene uh, product to also help with water tightness. Now here's a steel shingle that is actually installed over battens. So you see that little 
line there going uh, crosswise diagonally up. You see that little line of bare lumber? That is a batten that this is the top edge of a steel shingle that would be resting on. And this is what is called a uh, hook, or a solar hook, uh, so that in essence, uh, it comes up over the batten, over the top edge of the shingle, and then you, on the far left of that hook, you see the raised part of the bracket. That is what the rail would be attached to for the solar panels. Um, this is entirely fastened underneath the roof system. So you see the uh, lag screws uh, that are attaching that to the roof deck uh, off there to the lower right uh, with the two screws. Um, that's what attaches it to the roof deck. That area would be entirely covered by the next shingle when it is put in place. So the next shingle course will come in and, and cover that and it will completely conceal those fasteners and yet you still have the bracket extending out to fasten the solar to. Um, this is a neat system that works well with certain metal roofs. This would largely be a new construction system, be a little bit harder to retrofit a system with this. Um, with these batten mount, mounted uh, metal roofs, it would not be impossible to use this as a retrofit, uh, but certainly easier to use it as part of the uh, as part of a new installation. And then uh, here we see a, another uh, type of bracket that has been attached to a uh, exposed fastener metal roof. And basically, again, this one ha does have an exposed screw uh, that is uh, kept watertight with a rubber gasket, um, but it actually screws down into the roof panel. And that screw would not just be attaching to the rib. That's going down into the uh, decking underneath the roof system as well. And then coming up from the top, you see the attachment of the rail, uh, and then the PV panel would be attached to the rail. Here is a bracket that is somewhat similar, like for a what we'd call a corrugated or a sort of a curved corrugated metal roof. Uh, again, this would have exposed brackets uh, or exposed screws uh, attaching that. Uh, that hump in the middle would go over the corrugation in the metal roof panel. Uh, that thing you see sticking up from the top is then what the solar panel is attached to. And then you see two screw holes on each side of the corrugation, and those would be used to secure it down into not only securing it to the roof panel, uh, but to the decking underneath as well. Um, there on the bottom underneath each of those screw holes, you see a, a butyl rubber gasket that would assure water tightness then as well. So just a couple of quick photos here of installations. Uh, here is a uh, PV panel system on a metal shingle roof. Uh, I think we looked at this photo earlier, very nice installation on standing seam. Uh, and then here again is one on top of a metal shingle. So I, I touched on this idea earlier of uh, can a roof be made solar ready? And more and more metal roofing contractors are finding themselves doing this and talking about this. There's a number of ways that you can make a metal roof so it will be easier down the road to uh, install a solar system on top of it. Uh, one of those, as I mentioned earlier, would be with the metal shingles to use foam inserts behind the metal shingles. That uh, allows the metal shingles to better withstand foot traffic in areas where solar may be installed in the future. Um, mounting posts as another option. Um, if you know that uh, solar install is going to go on on a certain area of the roof, you could go ahead and put the brackets in now uh, when the roof is installed um, and then just have them all be entirely solar ready down the road when the homeowner chooses to do that. Um, another thing I've seen people do, and this was this was done years ago before you know, we had so many good options out there for solar brackets, but I've seen people actually put wood stanchions on the roof, um, actually flash the roof around those wood stanchions, very similar to how they'd flash around the skylight, and then basically use those raised stanchions to attach their solar panels to in the future uh, as well. Um, and then 
we we talked earlier so so another method of uh, solar attachment gets into our thin film on standing seam so we looked at these different options for attaching crystalline panels uh, thin film product are much much different again because it's integrated into the roof system um, usually with thin film solar on standing seam roofing, it is usually factory applied to the standing seam. Uh, usually the standing seam panels are 16 inches wide because most of the thin film comes at 15 inches wide. Nice thing about thin film uh, standing seam installations is you can actually then use flashings on the roof to cover all wires so you don't end up uh, with anything exposed or just running in conduits or anything. You've uh, covered or concealed everything by the roof system. Um, thin film solar can be integrated into full standing seam roofs. Uh, so you've got a standing seam roof that just has thin film on certain areas, or you could use a thin film uh, you could use a thin film system on an asphalt shingle roof. So you've got an asphalt shingle roof and just in a certain area, you've got this standing seam with thin film on it for the solar collection. Uh, so here's an example here of a thin film solar uh, installation. If you look on the far left and right edges of the standing seam panels, uh, you see areas that do not have the thin film. So that sort of blackish purplish that you see on the main part of the roof uh, that is the thin film solar collection. This is an interesting photo because you see a combination of traditional PV panels on the left um, and then on the right you actually see where they also have thin film solar uh, laminated to part of their standing seam as well. Uh, so I think that's pretty interesting. Um, here's some photos where a thin film on standing seam has been integrated into a metal shingle roof um, and you see a couple of examples of that again all of this is designed with flashings uh, so that it all makes a continuous integrated roof system not something just sitting on top of the roof um, and here is a thin film on standing seam on top of an asphalt shingle roof So the final type then is solar shingles, as we touched on earlier. Um, solar shingles are not the most efficient solar production, uh, but again, they are integrated into the roof system. So it's not something separate from the roof. The solar is the roof. Um, metal shingles uh, tend to work well with these solar shingles because a lot of these solar shingles have been built with exposures of 12 to 15 inches. Uh, most asphalt shingles are five to six inch exposure on the shingle. So you put a 12 to 50 solar shingle on top of that and it really stands out in stark contrast. On the other hand, if you put a solar shingle and integrate it with a metal shingle, most of which have a 12 inch exposure, um, it doesn't stand out quite as much. So this next photo, this actually is the Tesla roof. Uh, again, they have done a, a great job of, of product design and they're getting a few installations out there and uh, having good reports coming back on those uh, as well. They've got some great stuff on their website showing the installation of the Tesla roof. Uh, if you're interested in that, we, they certainly are, are sharing lots of good information. Uh, here is another solar shingle on top of an asphalt shingle. And you kind of see what I was talking about there. You've got the tall exposure of the solar shingle, the small exposure of the asphalt shingle tabs, um, they don't integrate real well. I mean, there, there's a, a very clear difference between uh, the shingle versus the solar shingle. Uh, same thing on this photo as well. So one of the questions that people ask me a lot is, well, where do I think the future of this is all going? Um, you know, at this point, certainly I personally, um, and believer that crystalline panels are usually a homeowner's best choice. Um, I think it's that years down the road, but I do think at some point the coatings themselves that are used on metal roofing will be used to generate solar power. So the coating on the metal roof itself will become our solar power uh, generator. So what does this combination of solar and metal mean to contractors? 
Um, by offering solar, whether you're a new, con new construction contractor or remodeler, by offering solar, you stand apart from other contractors offering something homeowners want. Uh, you better serve homeowners' needs by offering something that is environmentally friendly, saves energy, and adds home value. And you also meet the demand that increasingly, if you're in the construction business, kind of like I was talking about earlier, if you're in the roofing business, you're in the energy business, if you're in the construction business, you're in the energy business, you're going to have to help, either help people save energy or help them create or, or generate or harness energy. Uh, by offering metal and solar, you've got metal providing a great solid work surface. Uh, you have metal roofs helping to ensure that you will not have roof-related callbacks. Uh, a lot of shingle products tend to deteriorate fairly rapidly once they're exposed to the weather. Uh, metal roofing being a longer-term solution uh, to roofing doesn't have that deterioration, so it's less likely that you will have roof-related callbacks. Um, again, because of the stability of metal, any penetrations that are through the roof are more secure uh, when they're going through a metal surface. And you have the option of making the roof solar ready. You can even do the solar panel installation and make that a profit center for you. And you can take all things all the way to uh, when a solar contractor or an electrician will arrive on the job site. Um, tax and utility incentives. Reality is most residential arrays, arrays have an initial cost of twenty-five to $60,000. Uh, the, that cost can be offset for the initial owner by going to a company that will do a lease back option on residential solar systems. And there are lots of companies out there that do that. Um, there are also federal, state, and utility company tax credits and incentives to encourage the use of solar. Um, the tax incentives that are currently available is a federal solar investment tax credit. Uh, that is now available under the federal tax code through the year 2020, I believe. And additionally, the states of Arizona, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Hawaii, Maryland, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, and South Carolina all have their own uh, tax incentives for solar as well. Um, there are also SREC, Solar Renewable Energy Credits, uh, that homeowners can use to earn and sell credits for solar energy that they create. Um, and those are available in additional states uh, to those that are listed as well. Great information for what's available uh, in terms of uh, tax credits and incentives are uh, sunrun.com and desire, D-S-I-R-E, USA.org. Uh, these are both great web websites where consumers can find out what sort of tax credits are available in their area. Um, and again, as we wrap up here, um, the Metal Roofing Alliance wants to be available as your resource. Uh, metalroofing.com uh, is our website. There is a solar section on the website. And you are also welcome to contact me anytime, uh, todd.miller at isaiahindustries.com. And I will be happy to answer your questions as well. Um, that said, I think Mike's going to open us up here for questions and see if you got anything. That's right, Todd. Thank you very much. And uh, <clears throat> yes, I am putting out the call to our audience to submit their questions. Uh, they have actually been very active in sending in their questions as you've been presenting. So we're going to get right to quite a number of questions, actually. Um, I want to start with uh, <clears throat> a question from Ravi. Um, he says, the widely held view is that metal roofs make a lot of noise during rain or maybe even hail events, or maybe you're visited by a bunch of squirrels. Um, <laughs> how does one overcome this noise factor? Sure. Um, it has been my experience, and I've been doing this for, like I said, about 35 years. I've only had a couple of homeowners come back to me and, and bring me noise complaints, and both situations were what I call California construction. Uh, meaning that you look up and you sit from inside the home and you see the bottom side of the roof deck. Um, the reality is today with what we do so much in terms of insulation and even airspace in our attic um, really does deaden that noise. Um, I have had four houses now I've lived in with metal roofs. 
uh, two of those have had cathedral ceilings. Um, I've never had anything objectionable as far as noise. Kind of interesting, though. I, I did have an office once that had a skylight in it. And man, when it rained, that skylight was thunderous. But uh, uh, yet people always kind of get concerned about the metal roof. And I understand the concern. But gosh, just almost never have I have I had that complaint back from the homeowner. Gotcha. All right. Um, so we had a question too from um, David, and it's a it's a bit of a challenging one. Uh, he says metal roofs are much better investment, as the total cost of ownership is very much in favor of metal. Yet we don't see them used prevalently on new homes. And what will it take to finally make a breakthrough there? Um, I, th I think that there's a lot of things going on there. One of the things is both builders and architects. Um, need to have confidence in the metal products that are out there and they need to have confidence in the companies that will install those products. Um, and that's happening all the time. Actually, some of the studies coming back do show that we are gaining market share uh, in the new construction end of things faster than we are in the retrofit end of things. Um, especially as new construction has rebounded since uh, uh, 2008 to 2011. Um, one of the things we've seen is a lot of the new construction going on out there is very, very high end. And so we have seen metal increasing all the time. You don't typically see metal being used on a on a spec home where, you know, chances are that builder is going to decide to spend his extra money with a nicer kitchen or or something like that. Um, but on custom homes, we are seeing more and more metal, um, seeing a lot of composite roofs as well, a lot of tile, um, not so much, not, not as much asphalt shingle on, on the upper end new construction anymore. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so we've got a couple of questions that are all kind of hitting on the same topic. So I'm going to kind of bunch them all together. Um, are you seeing an increase? in metal roofing in areas recently affected by hurricanes? And I've got a couple of follow-up questions on that. So let's, let's start with the first one. Sure. <laughs> well, you know, we first of all, our heart goes out to those who have been affected by the, the horrible storms the last couple of years. But, you know, we have seen lots of success stories where metal roofs did very well. Um, I was uh, down on ground zero at, after Hurricane Harvey last year, just a couple weeks after the storm down in Corpus Christi. And one of the things I also saw was that homes that were built according to newer uh, building codes far outperformed older construction. Um, you know, the the magnitude of, of storms like uh, Harvey and, and Irma and, and Michael, um, where it caused so much structural damage, you know, last year, the, the Harvey and Irma, they're just now getting those homes back out of, out of the ground again. Um, yes, in fact, I've been just had a homeowner contact me recently who's rebuilding in Texas and said, gosh, I really want metal this time. Um, interesting thing is, though, Florence, which was um, more of a water event, the, the storm that came into North Carolina a, a month or so ago, um, that was more of a water event. Uh, it had, it had significant winds. If, if you recall, it just came ashore and sat there for a couple days. And that was very hard on roofs, but yet didn't cause structural damage. Um, so the interest in metal out of North Carolina right now is absolutely unprecedented. Um, I mean, every day we are seeing at my office homeowners calling in from North Carolina. Um, very committed to using metal because they saw that it performed well. And so let's get to the follow-up then. Um, Alan wanted to know if metal roofs are able to meet hurricane ratings. Uh, yes. I mean, most of the products out there um, meet uh, Dade County, Florida requirements, uh, Texas Department of Insurance, coastal requirements. Um, of course, there's also the new IBHS Fortified Home Program, and uh, yes, most of the metal roofs can, can meet those requirements. In some cases, uh, that is done by increasing the number of fasteners uh, that are used with the system, um, but the answer is yes. Okay, and then the final follow-up question on this particular topic came from Jorge, who wanted to know if, uh, is there an airspeed standard? Uh, in order to consider the stress for the type of roof. I, I don't 
know if there is such a standard or not. Um, I'm not sure if that's a reference to the, the the mounting of solar systems on top of metal roofs. The the answer to that is yes, there are uplift requirements for solar mounts um, to make sure that the PV panels stay attached to the house. I'm not quite sure if that's what they were asking. Yeah, um, as don't. far as as far as metal roofs. Um, most of the manufacturers out there uh, are offering 120 mile an hour wind warranties. Um, I mean, typically at 90 to 95 mile an hour, we're seeing structural damage, but uh, most of them are offering 120 mile an hour wind warranties. Let's stick on the weather topic here for just a second. Um, so Ravi had a question about um, uh, leaves and ice dams. He wanted to know if the uh, outer edge of the of the PV system should be draped with some kind of flashing to prevent leaves from going underneath and getting trapped. Uh, he's worried that it may may cause ice dams. Ravi's in uh, Toronto, so he's thinking a lot about the the cold. Uh, I have never seen that done. I understand the concern. Um, of course, if you do something like that and you 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 know try to stop that uphill edge and, and put some sort of flashing in there, then you've got to somehow get that stuff down the down around to the sides of the solar panels. Um, so, you know, of course you do that when you've got things like skylights and, and chimney type penetrations in the roof. But no, I've never seen that done with PV panels. Normally the gap between the panel and the roof system is sufficient to, to allow those things to get through. Okay. And Anthony wanted to know, how does one properly remove snow from the panels? <laughs> um, I, I don't think typically most folks don't do anything to it. Um, I mean, it, it uh, uh, the, one of the things is the, the thin film uh, systems actually can be covered with snow and still create some energy. Um, not so much the case with, with crystalline panels. Um, but I would be too concerned about causing damage, um, especially with thin films. Uh, if you went up there and tried to remove it, I think you just got to let nature run its course. Okay. Um, back onto the wind for just a second. I think this is where Ravi's question is coming from here. He wanted to know how high should the solar panels be from the roof panels? Some are designed to be six inches off and some are well over 10 inches off. Um, I'm sure there's a wind concern there, but uh, you know there may be other concerns there too. So on the height of the panel from the roof, yeah. what are you seeing out there? You know, typical is is around four to six inches. Um, yes, that does impact the the wind uplift pressure that that potentially is on the panel. Um, the reason folks will sometimes go to a higher standoff is again to get advantage of some little bit cooler temperatures, more airflow underneath the panel to help make the panel more efficient. Um, but I think most of these systems have been tested with like a four to six inch standoff. Okay. Um, so we, uh, let's go in a little bit of a different direction. Um, let's go uh, with a question from Alan. He wanted to know if anyone's attempted to get like the roof and the solar system bundled together as a package for the 30% tax credit. I I thought that the tax credit only applies to the solar system, not to the roof, but are there any kind of final financial incentives that you can bundle with roof and solar? Well, it's a good question. Yes, I've seen people do that with the integrated systems. Um, no way to do that with a PV system, but uh, with the solar shingle or the thin film, you could do that, but only for the solar portion of the roof, not for the entire roof. Um, but but in that case, you know, the the roof and the solar are the same. So yes, you're getting the you're applying for tax credit on both, but again, only for that part of the roof that is being used to produce energy, not not for the rest of the roof. Um, now that said, there's been a federal tax credit uh, for a number of years on reflective metal roofing. Uh, that a lot that's one of the 25C tax credits a lot of homeowners have taken advantage of, um, and that applies to the entire roof. Uh, that tax credit, after being in place many years, did expire at the end of 2017. 
um, but there is a chance that it could get retro retroactively reinstated uh, late this year or early 19. Gotcha. Yeah, and the, and the federal tax credit too, it's set to like sunset, right? It kind of it doesn't just go away cold turkey, it, it slowly fades away. On the on the solar, correct. The yeah. the twenty five C for reflective metal roofing is an all or nothing thing. Gotcha. Okay. Good. Thanks for the clarification there. Um, so we had a question from Elizabeth. Um, it's in regards to solar rights laws. Um, mm. Do you have any resources that show which states have such laws? Um, and then I guess my follow up question is, you know, can you explain just what a solar rights law even is? <laughs> I, I have to, to uh, plead ignorance on that. I'm not sure what that's referencing. I do not know. I apologize. Okay. Uh, well, I, the, I can, I can share a little bit, I guess. Go ahead. Please, please. Go ahead. Well, I, was, I can share a little bit. Being a resident of Illinois, I know that uh, the state of Illinois passed a uh, uh, solar rights law, or maybe it's called a renewable energy law, um, that allows homeowners to put renewable energy systems on their property and um, and not face any repercussions from their homeowner association. Gotcha. Yeah, yes. because the HOAs are typically legally binding entities. Um, right. And so uh, that's that's how I'm familiar with it being here in Illinois. And, and that's I have seen that uh, Florida has that. Um, I would Yes, that if you went to that uh, sunrun.com, you'll probably find a listing on there of states that uh, have that protection. I know, like I said, Florida does. Um, um, yeah, there has to be some pretty easy to find resources out there with that. Okay. I want to make sure I put out a final call for questions. I appreciate uh, Todd sticking around a little bit longer today, but there were, there were quite a few questions already from the audience. Um, I wanted to get to uh, at least one more. I, uh, it's actually from me. Um, you, you know, you showed some pictures of some absolutely beautiful uh, metal shingle roofing, uh, especially early in the presentation, but but throughout, you, you showed some really great pictures. And I'm a big fan of metal shingles. Um, yet sometimes, and I know I face this personally, but, but sometimes there is resistance from HOAs. Um, because it's, you know, not quote the norm or, or the person who's on the committee doesn't know what this product is at all, has no familiarity with it because they're not even in the building industry. Do you see instances like this and how do you advise homeowners to educate, I'll diplomatically say, the ignorant? <laughs> Um, I, I do think the Metal Roofing Alliance is a great resource. I mean, that really is a lot of what that organization was founded to do, was to um, dispel misunderstandings that are out there. Um, I know that a lot of the manufacturers uh, also are always happy to come in and meet with uh, HOAs, ARBs, uh, property owners, boards, those types of things, anyone that they can possibly meet with, contractors. Um, but yeah, there's there's quite a quite a good amount of information even on the uh, metalroofing.com website. Great, awesome. Make sure you go visit uh, metalroofing.com. We referenced it earlier, but uh, certainly a helpful resource. I don't see any other questions, so I want to go ahead and thank Todd for uh, sharing his knowledge with us today. Wonderful pictures, um, you know, all the experience that you've uh, accumulated over the course of your career. Really, really do appreciate it, Todd. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity. It's been a pleasure to be here. I enjoyed it. I also want to thank our audience for attending and asking all those wonderful, great questions. And thank you to the Metal Roofing Alliance for their generous sponsorship. Again, www.metalroofing.com. We'll see you back here in exactly four weeks. That will be Wednesday, December 5th. We'll be talking with a representative from LP about meeting fire codes with fire-rated sheathing. And that will start at our usual time of 2 p.m. Eastern. Until we meet again, I hope you get a chance to relax and enjoy some time and some great food with family and friends during the Thanksgiving holiday. It's only 15 days away. I know I'm looking forward to it. Take care, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>